I'm Nkenge Zola. Feature films are a key element in the transmission of images. Images of who we are, who we think we are, and who and what we want to be. In 1989, Matty Rich placed himself into the midst of filmmaking as producer, director, writer, and actor in Straight Out of Brooklyn. Greetings, brother. How are you doing, sister? Peace. Great, Quite peace well. to you, too. Well, you know, I want you to uh, come forth and give us a sense of what was going on in that school environment once you moved from home mm -hmm. and began to go to the new school, which was filled with folks of uh, European descent. Give me the perspective. Why did you go to film? Why images? Why film? Why did that capture your imagination? Well, the, the whole thing is film is something that so many people go and see, so, so many people go to the movies, but the people that I was making the movie for, we didn't read as much. We listened to the radio as much, more than we read, and we saw movies more than we listened to the radio. So that's why I wanted to capture, you can see a movie and it'll stick with you for the rest of your life. You'll see a performance and it'll stick with you for a long time. And that's why I wanted to make a, um, the movie instead of a book, instead of doing a radio broadcast or something like that. But um, film is a very powerful media, very powerful. Okay, okay, accept it, grant it. But there was something happening in this part of you, this part of you, that made you gravitate to film as opposed to something else. What was happening, the personal I, I, tip? I think it was, um, I didn't get into the industry because I saw a director's work or so I, or I saw I wanted to be like someone. I did it because I was angry, because I was frustrated, because when I looked outside my window, I, I didn't see people singing. I didn't see people dancing. No one was having a house party. I saw pain. I saw oppression. I saw anger. I saw people living in a hopeless environment. People are searching a way to find a way out of that community, a way to provide for their family. That's why I did it. When I saw that Brady Bunch family, and Peter dropped the ice cream on the floor, and Mr. Brady said, no problem. When I did it, I got a slap in my face. So I told my mother, that's what I want to do. Whoever made that program, I didn't, I didn't think the, the people in the program were real, but whoever created that, I want to create something that I saw, that I believed in, that I saw that was so much pain, that there was so much anger. When I saw his father, on a TV show, I said, why wasn't my father and my friend's father and the fathers of my community in America, why weren't we that happy? Why couldn't we go on uh, camping trips? Why didn't we have the materialistic things? So I wanted to make a movie about what I saw. Okay. And that's why I chose film, because film grabbed me, and that TV show grabbed me by say, about saying, why do I feel so low when I, when I see that TV show? Mm. Why do I feel so low about myself? Why can't I express, I want to do a movie about expressing myself and expressing the things that my friends go through, They're expressing the things that my uh, fathers and my uncles and my mother and my community go through. And that's why I did film. Okay, so there, there's this concept that I know you're familiar with that once you graduate from school, once you reach the highest heights, the first thing you want to do is get out of your community. Now you've titled the film Straight Out of Brooklyn. This, did you do that in the, in the sense of, of following that line of get yourself together to leave your community? Or was something else happening? No, it's, it's called Straight Out of Brooklyn because I felt, why wouldn't we so-called make it? Why wouldn't we get that so-called American dream, that materialistic thing when you have enough money to move? Why, when, why do you have to leave and go to Park Avenue and go to Bel Air and go to Beverly Hills? Why can't you stay home when we accept you if you have a dollar or if we accept you if you have a million dollars? Why can't you show young men like me a certain way, a different way of life? Why can't you go in the community and so we can touch you, we can feel you, we can see you, we can be like this, not like you're like this. The whole thing of why it's called Straight Out of Brooklyn is why can't we communicate? Why can't we live together? We lived together when you were broke. So why when you make it, you have to leave me? Why when you even leave, you don't even look back and help me? Tell me which films or which scenes in the film illustrate what you just described best? Well, there's a number. There's a, there's a <laughs> lot of them. There's, um, there's one scene that I really love is when you go and see the movie, the father talks to himself in the mirror. And he talks, he, you don't see anyone in the mirror, but 
he's in his drunken rage and he's hurting. and he's talking about how his father told him that he could be a doctor and he can be a lawyer and his son is overhearing his father's pain and he's looking in that mirror and he's telling white society in the white world you know what I want I want to be a man I want an education I want my son to have the privilege of going to school not going to school and learning about Thomas Edison and Abraham Lincoln but going to school and learning about himself learning about himself and bringing some of that knowledge and, and use it towards the community so many people say well Maddie why don't you just tell kids get a job what job no one knocked on my door at the age of 10 after I saw that Brady Bunch and said, Manny, here's 250 film books, read these books. You're going to become a filmmaker. No, I took it into my own head. I made my own destiny. I said, I see so many of my friends in, uh, who are in prison. To be 19 years old and see all of my friends dead. To see my best friend die in prison. To see my aunt, my, aunt, my uncle die on my birthday. To see my, my brother being beat, be beaten by 10 brothers and putting into a coma to see everyone in the community knocked off, oppressed, angry, I wasn't going into that game. I wasn't going to be oppressed. I wanted to make my destiny. I wanted to make myself what I am today. Hmm. People said, Maddie, you got to go to school for four years and you got to go to school for another four years. Those people are wrong. I'm standing here. All right. Take me through the aesthetic process. Now, when you began to make this film, when the shooting actually began, when you got to the editing stage, I mean, after you'd seen the actors moving around, going through the, the lines, were you sad? Are you satisfied? Is what we see consistent with what you experienced in Red Hook? Every every single piece is just not what I experienced in Red Hook. It's what I experienced as a young man, seeing so many of my peers, black men and black women, looking like this with handcuffs. So many of us are dead. What I put on the screen and what I wrote on my paper is right on that screen. Nothing's changed. I, add, I took some out because editing process, you want to move the movie on a little quicker. But everything that I had in my mind, all of my pain, all of my anger, and I still am hurting, I still am angry, is on that screen. Every little single bit. Okay, now, the, 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 the pain is there. It's not going anywhere until, I would suggest, until there's some other things that happen in the bigger society that we're all a part of, but there's also the exhilaration. And I know you have some exhilarating experiences from doing this process. Sure, I mean, there's, uh, there's a lot. I mean, when I was shooting, uh, and I came back to Red Hook, and people in the community said, Maddie, oh, we, we, we're glad you're, you're back in here. You're, black, you're back in the community doing the movie about us. Not Red Hook, but the community of America. And, um, but there was one young brother who was 17, the same age as I was. I grew up with him, and he was a neighborhood drug dealer. And he basically said, Maddie, I love you. Born and raised with you. But I'm going to tell you one thing. When I tell you to get off that corner, you have to give me a half an hour notice if you want to shoot on that corner. But when I tell you to get off that corner, you get off that corner. This guy, brother, was 17 years old, the same age as I was and he's running the neighborhood. I have two grandmothers who live there who sleep on the floor. If you sleep on the bed, you may get a bullet in your chest sometimes. So many older people are afraid to come out. So many people leave. Young people don't have a direction, don't have someone to say, not be a leader, but see a different way out. So many people after coming to see my movie cry and say, man, that's like being home. That's my father who's in pain. That's me right there. What are we going to do about this? Why do I have to go home? I don't want to go home. So many men come up to me and say, I'm 65 years old. I lost two, two sons already. I have one left. What can we do about this thing? People need to see someone in another light, not that one directional drug dealer. You need to see someone who can make you think. So now you can say, oh, so Maddie Rich made it, not by going the traditional way, but it's cool to think. The difference between me and a regular teen is I'm no brain surgeon. I do the same exact thing that you do, but I use my brain. The number one killer in the black community, the number one killer that killed all of my friends is the emotion, is your heart that kills us all. You talk about my mother, bang, get off the corner, bang. Hmm. Now, by, now by seeing Maddie Rich, 
not by wanting to be what, like me, but take that same self-determination, that same persistence that a young kid living in the inner city can say, now, I may not eat three times a day. I may not have the money to go to college, but he made it. He made it by using this, by taking all that negative anger that he had and use it to something positive and I can do it too. Not by being a filmmaker, by being anything that I want to be. Nobody can tell me that I have to take second, be second class. I can be number one class, but I can do it my way. I don't have to knock on somebody's door and say, please, sir, give me a job. No. Well, you know the kind of society we live in, and, and I mean, no slight, no knock, but we have a tendency to want somebody to be the messiah. And you know, being a filmmaker, being, being engaged in the process of creating and projecting images, that folks are going to want a lot of stuff from you. Sure. And uh, what kind of things are you not going to be willing to give up? One thing I won't ever give up is my realism, is the truth, is the honesty, is my heart. That's what made me do this movie. Not to become a 19-year-old genius because I was angry and it was because I was upset. Universal Columbia, no one made this movie. The community made this movie. Black folks gave me the money. One thing I will never do is change myself. I will never change, yes, uh-huh. Don't look at me like that. Like, oh, but see what, you, see, what you're used to is when we make it, we change. Yeah, and it's one, two, three, fifty million people, fifty eleven folks have no, been through that now. Never will. You, aren't you? You're not speaking prematurely. Never. Will. No, I, I'm not speaking prematurely because it's happened. Okay. It's happened. I've been on not the brag and boast, but so many TV shows, so many radio shows, but I still go back and I sit on the corner and drink Kool-Aid. I still go back and talk to the people. I still go back to my grandmothers. No one's changed. No one's moved. Still the same level-headed, strong person. Nothing's changing me. The difference between me and a regular entertainer is I know who I am. I know how I got here, and I'm not leaving. All right. Let me give you one or two more. Um, television. You know, when you look at the, the lineup and the schedule, they're showing more and more and more and more and more comedy, more and more ha 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 ha, yuck yuck yucks. Mm -hmm. And the notion behind that is that folks don't want to see serious hardcore. Now we've got films like um, yours, and a lot of the films that that African men and women in the states are involved in, there's some hardcore serious films. Now um, I don't know what to make of that. I mean, how much more? I mean, we know that a lot of the experiences we have are, are really heart-rending experiences. I mean, everybody in the society runs up one day with something that like blows their minds. Why did this happen to me? Yeah. So uh, how much more of these kind of hardcore films are we gonna, gonna take? Are you gonna make some more realism films? Or are you gonna do something different? Well, I'm gonna always, I'm gonna always do something real um, because when I look outside my window, people aren't singing. I don't see people saying, ha, ha, ha. I see people saying, why me? I see people saying, look at my situation. Why are we living like this? I see people who are zombies who need help. People who are hooked on drugs. People who want to be working. People who want to educate themselves in any which way they, that they can possibly can. People who want an opportunity. There has been too much ha ha ha, too much watermelon, too much tap dancing, too much of that all for me. Mm. I'm tired of it. So the I think that we need as black films that all the black films that are going to come out have a strong message just like straight out of brooklyn but i haven't seen them all straight out of brooklyn is just not like coffee where you just oh god i can't take it no i mean you in real life we have some funny parts i play one of the characters larry love you have some funny parts you have some entertaining parts but the thing that you're going to come out of this movie is thought it's not going to be a regular movie where you're going to go home and say Oh man, that was so funny. That movie had me going. Uh huh. And brah, you're hiding under your bed. What you'll get to do is take a piece of that and use it towards your life. But you'll still be entertained. Life imitates art, imitates life, imitates art. Most definitely. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am.
All right. There were some filmmakers in town a couple of weeks ago, and we know there's just these levels of, um, of achievement in any field. I mean, there are the Spike Lees, the, the Charles Burnett's, the Robert Townsend's, but there are also people like the uh, Eric Knight, Eric Daniels, Michael Mason's, mm. um, the, those individuals who are just getting through their first and second films, and none of them have been distributed at all on the level that you have. And uh, do you see yourself more in the line of, of these multi-million dollar producing uh, filmmakers, or do you see yourself connected with the people who are trying to slug it out, slowly but surely, well, alone? I'm not a multi-million dollar filmmaker. Um, I don't think that you have to make, have a $10 million dollar movie to make a good movie. For one thing, you can make a good movie on two, three million, it doesn't matter. As long as the subject is right and as long as you know what you're doing technically and, and whatever may have you. I'm for any filmmaker, any black, any Latin, any filmmaker who is struggling. I'm not into the Hollywood thing. I'm not a Hollywood film director. Okay. So I'm for all. I'm not into the Holly game, Hollywood game. Whoever would love to make a movie, would love to make a movie on their heart, even may, it, it may not have been distributed once, the, their first movie or their second movie. But the thing is, if they don't want to distribute yours, we have to come together and make a way that you can get distributed by your own. As long as you keep depending on them to distribute your things, there, was, there will always be a drought. They will always cut you loose. But well, would you be satisfied if the film was only going to be seen, or if any films you do, I'm presuming and assuming you're going to make 50 million films. Would you be satisfied if only people in the neighborhood saw? Well, see, that's why I made it. You have to understand, I didn't, okay. I didn't make this. I'm, I'm, I'm glad to be on the show. I'm glad to be on all TV shows and all radio shows, but I did not make this for this. I made it not just for Red Hook. If I had to travel the world and go to each community and say, this is what, what I'm going through. I didn't make it for the acclaimed fame. I did it because I was angry and I was upset. That's why I made it. So, you made, you made that one because you were angry and upset, but there's, there's a creative process that you've unleashed within yourself that is enriching so many people on all different levels. And I wonder what kind of um, introspection you've conducted in your quiet secret moments. <laughs> but since, this, since all this stuff has really blown up. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean. I want to be nosy. Oh, no, you want to be nosy. Yeah. <laughs> I ain't, well, uh, well, I, I always think about um, things in, in that's, going, that's going on in the community. I always think about um, what effect that I had on, um, like if I speak at schools or if I speak anywhere. Um, I try to not be a role model because a role model is feeling good about yourself. You may be dirt poor. Wait, stop. Okay. You try not to be a role model because being a well, role see, model is feeling see, good about yourself? See, what I don't like to be is for people to say, well, Maddie Rich, you're a role model. Either way, sure, people are going to categorize me. If you're a young person, you're making a stand and you're saying this is what this is, they're going to say, well, you're a role model. But what I'm saying is, sure, you can call me whatever you want, but you're a role model also. And you're a role model also because a role model is feeling good about yourself. You may not have a big middle dough. You may not have that luxurious car. You may not even eat three times a day, but you still can be a role model. You still can feel good about yourself. You still can say, I have this test. I have this going on for me. I have that going on for me. I may not have those materialistic things, but I got my health, I have my family, and I'm a role model because I'm living good. I'm living positively. That's a role model. Thank you very much. Thank for you for having us. All right. Go see the movie, Straight Outta Brooklyn. All right. Maddie Rich, we're going to be attentive to your future works. Thank you. Peace and greetings. You too. All right.